Currently, high pressure processing or HPP is gaining attention in food processing. It is mainly due to its ability to produce fresh like products with less impact on nutritional and sensory attributes as compared to the traditional heat treatment process. In this video, I am going to explain basic understanding of high pressure processing. In the coming videos, I will explain different aspect of high pressure processing for food. First, we can look at an example. We can place an orange in a chamber filled with water and then we can apply pressure in the chamber with a piston. What would happen? We may think orange will crash, but orange will not crash. You may ask why. Crashing of an orange could not occur since pressure acts instantaneously and it is equally distributed Therefore, obvious crushing could not be observed. However, we could observe macroscopic structural and molecular changes. These changes are the two main important effects of high pressure. Macroscopic structural changes could be observed more in a highly porous food since air or gaseous phase could create non-uniform pressure inside the food. When we apply high pressure. Food packaging system needs to be reversed to its original volume when pressure is released. The required criteria for the packaging materials used in HPP will be discussed in another video. HPP can inactivate microbes and enzymes. In addition, HPP has wide applications in the food process. Spores are more resistant to high pressure as compared to the vegetative cells. Different levels of applied pressure can cause different types of damage to the microbial cells. At 50 megapascal, protein synthesis is innovated and numbers of ribosomes are reduced. At 100 megapascal, reversible protein denaturation and compression of gas vehicles are observed. 200 megapascal is the microbial lethality threshold. At this pressure, membrane damage and sign of cytoplasmic leakages are observed. At 300 megapascal, irreversible protein denaturation and cytoplasmic leakage are observed. Pressure, volume and temperature are directly related. That is an applied pressure causes a rapid increase in temperature that is heating effect. And reduced pressure causes decrease in temperature that is cooling effect. For example, about 3 degrees C increase of temperature is observed for every 100 megapascal increase in pressure at room temperature that is 25 degrees C. Therefore, a pressure process can be an adiabatic process. In this process, increasing pressure increases the temperature of the system since it generates heat. Compression raises temperature nonlinearly. Similarly, we could achieve lower temperature when pressure is released, even sub zero temperature. If we want to operate, at constant temperature that is isothermally then we need to have a cooling system to generate heat from the high pressure process. The rapid heating and cooling resulting from HPP treatment offer a unique way to increase the temperature of the product during the pressure treatment and to cool it rapidly. Therefore, we could have synergistic effect of temperature and pressure. When high pressure is applied, temperature distribution may not be uniform within the food sample. For example, a warmer layer can be formed surrounding the food surface. 
there are three important principles of high pressure processing isostatic principle le chatelier's principle and microscopic ordering isostatic principle indicates pressure is transmitted instantaneously and uniformly throughout the pressure vessel le chatelier's principle indicates reaction volume changes as a result of high pressure and shift the equilibrium the change in equilibrium accelerates the reaction to counteract the effect of volume change by pressure principle of microscopic ordering indicates at constant temperature an increase in pressure increases degree of ordering of molecules therefore pressure and temperature exert antagonistic forces on the molecular structure and it can cause chemical reactions in this diagram we can observe how pressure can be transmitted instantaneously and uniformly throughout the vessel it allows processing of any food product regardless of its size and shape high pressure in food processing can be applied mainly in two ways one option is to create high atmospheric pressure by water as a transmitting fluid that is hpp another option is to apply high pressure carbon dioxide or dense phase carbon dioxide that is hpc in this case applied pressure at much lower levels than hpp in a laboratory scale pressure up to 900 megapascal could be possible however the food industry generally uses up to 600 megapascal as the target pressure semi continuous liquid foods use 100 to 400 megapascal and need aseptic packaging high pressure carbon dioxide hpc uses lower pressure that is around 50 megapascal since carbon dioxide is used in this diagram we can see how decrease of total volume with pressure reduces the reaction volume le chatelier's principle indicates that pressure can change the equilibrium condition which can cause chemical reactions increase in pressure can raise the degree of molecular ordering in this slide we can see how nitrogen and hydrogen could be reordered to ammonia in this slide we could observe substitution reaction by water bromine is replaced by hydroxyl group as water is broken into hydrogen and hydroxyl groups in this case bromine in the c2 carbon is replaced by oh group and then hydrogen bromide is formed in this slide we can observe molecular ordering in polymeric molecular chains for example linear ordering branch ordering cross linked ordering and network ordering in the next video i will include basic equipment and operations of hpp thank you for watching this video until the end please subscribe to this channel if you would like to watch similar videos